This is an exciting segment for me. When I was growing up, one of my absolute childhood heroes was Bruce Lee. Justifiably um, I, so. Yeah, I had posters on the walls. I, I entered the Dragon, uh, Fist of Fury, even Game of Death after he passed away. I got the opportunity to talk to his daughter, Shannon Lee. That's pretty awesome. About growing up being Bruce Lee's daughter, about her carrying the torch to the Bruce Lee Foundation. And I got to tell you, this was this is a remarkable woman. It's one of the best interviews I've ever done. Well, I don't, I don't think we should waste much more time. Let's check it out. Yes. Hey guys, so I'm with Shannon Lee. Uh, daughter of Bruce Lee and really the torchbearer of so many amazing things that are happening right now. Yes. You know, Shannon, when I when I grew up, when I was a little kid, um, all these posters and stuff you have over here, that was kind of my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I didn't know how to do anything, but I could still throw punches in the air and stuff like that. <laughs> but um, when you were a little kid, I mean, there was there a point in your life where all of a sudden you realized how important your dad was to so many different people? Gosh, you know, it's been sort of this um, uh, adjustment that has happened slowly over a period of time, you know. Yeah. You know, when, when I was a kid and, and my father passed away and then Enter the Dragon came out, of course there was a lot of hoopla about him because right. Enter the Dragon came out and then his other Chinese films started to be released and, and all that. And I think that my mom in particular really thought that it would just die down after a while because he had passed away. And so I knew my dad had made some movies and that he was cool and could, yeah, was you know cool. he could kick ass and all that kind of stuff. But um, I guess it never really struck me until I was quite a bit older and started, especially started traveling and doing my own acting and encountering you know large groups of people at, at uh, entertainment-based or martial arts-based yeah. sort of events yeah. and having so many people come up to me the world over and say, oh my gosh, your dad was so amazing and he's inspired me or influenced me or, you know, he was just such a cool guy or wow, his writings have really, you know, helped me and, mm -hmm. and things like that. So, you know, I was already probably in my 20s when I really wow. started to encounter a lot of that. Yeah. But of course I knew he was Bruce Lee, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I yeah. guess I never really understood his global reach and effect until I was did, much older. Did, did your mom kind of shelter you from that? Yes, definitely. My, That's really interesting. Yes, my mom d did not raise us in the public eye. Mm -hmm. We, um, in fact, were encouraged as kids not to mention that we were um, related to Bruce Lee, um, to people that we were first meeting, and she always said it's best for people to get to know you um, for who, for you, who are. you are, right? And then that can come up later. So you're, you know, I got to tell you, your mom must be. You know, they say behind every great man is a great woman. <laughs> your mom must be such an incredible woman. Yeah, she really is. Because the way she raised you and, and Brandon, and, and the way that she let you um, discover your dad. Yes. I really like that. I think that I just can't imagine a smarter way of going about doing that. Yeah, it's really true because as kids, after my father passed away, both my brother and I tended to shy away from martial arts um, be oh. because it was just kind of overwhelming yeah. and we were uh, adjusting to a new place and, um, and l moving from Hong Kong back to the United States and all of that and it was a little overwhelming to dive into martial arts and she was didn't push us. Mm -hmm. And both of us, on our own time and in our own ways, came to the study of martial arts. You started arts. gravitating on your own towards it. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's that's the best way for you to discover it. Now, your dad was a big chronicler. He he was um, he was always writing down what he did every day. His workout regimens. You know. You know. <laughs> it's it's it's, it's uh, Steve's birthday. <laughs> I saw your video. Right. Um, you know, my mom, she never kept stuff of my dad's like that. Mm. But for you, that must be wonderful because can you just kind of go and explore his library and explore his like his day timers and stuff like that and kind of kind of reconnect and, and learn maybe more about him through that? Definitely. I'm very fortunate because he left behind so much and, and, yeah. and not even so much like, you know, I worked out this much today, da da da, da but he wrote down um, you know, so many things that he was thinking about and working on and trying to delve deep into himself. Philosophy, not just, not yeah. just fighting. Philosophy just. And, and, and as well as fighting and he had, you know, this library of thousands of books that he underlined and annotated so cool. in and all these things. So he really has left so much for me 
in a way that he can in, continue to parent me even though he's not here, you know? What was the, what was, was there certain things that you discovered about your father through going through the libraries and like that that you were surprised of? Um, you know, I think what it is, again, is that I came to, dis I've also come to discover him in that way by degrees. And so, as I've gotten older and I myself are learning my own lessons and God, hopefully yeah. <laughs> maturing and, and all of that kind of and stuff. And you have a little one that you're raising too. Yes, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm um, raising my own daughter and everything, that I, um, can really start to take so much more all the time from all the things that he wrote and did and realize how hard he worked, you know? I think a lot of time that is often missed, you know? People think, mm -hmm. oh, he worked hard, but he was not just naturally talented. You know, he no. put in a lot of effort. That's what, from your father's legacy, what I've discovered of it was the most inspiring to me, mm -hmm. is that this was a man that just was so driven at anything that he was he believed in, wasn't he? Yes, yes, and in fact, I think that's really the gift of his legacy, is that mm -hmm. what he believed in, first of all, he delved in himself and really turned the lens on himself. Looked who Looked he was. At, deeply yeah. at who he was, yeah. and then all of the things that inspired him and that he was interested in and worked, in, worked on, he put that through the filter of himself and then expressed it out into the world. And I think that's why we remember him today. You know, you, you acted for a while, mm -hmm. and but now in 2008, you, you've you made a big step to kind of carry this torch. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and that, I, I need to know, what was, what was the thing that you said, okay, I need to step and, and grab this and, and carry on with the legacy? What, what, what made that happen? Yeah. Um, again, 2008 was was you know de a, a definitive step. But prior to that, I had started to be involved in in helping with my father's legacy um, several years prior to that. I had decided to take a break from acting. I wanted to you know have a family, and I really wasn't that grounded at the time I was doing my acting career. I, you know, I was still sort of in the in the trail of my of my grief from the loss of my brother and yeah, I didn't yeah. have great representation as an actress and I was kind of like all out there you know floundering around trying to figure out what to do right. so I said let's take a break from all of that and I started to get into the business side of things and talk to my mom and she wanted to retire and so I kind of stepped in but what happened in 2008 was that um, I was able to reacquire all of the rights to the to from uh, Universal from Universal for the exploitation. That is so cool. Of the Native Americans. Yeah. Was it a long, arduous process to get it done? Yes. Oh, <laughs> a very long and arduous process. It took a couple of years um, from the time that it became, you know, a possibility to completion. And you were you spearheaded that? Yes. <laughs> well, just not because it, it's so because it was your father, and it's his legacy, and there's so many people that love him, and there's so much that you want to keep true to who he was mm -hmm. and his message. This was such an important thing for you to do. It was, it was, and and it, and it was, uh, you know, a, a difficult thing to do, and it was definitely an uphill battle. But I really feel like um, I'm so grateful to be able to now be in charge of sort of piloting this. And putting it, and hopefully doing the best by him. What a triumph! Yeah. And you have the Bruce Lee Foundation. Yes. What is the core message of the Bruce Lee Foundation? The mess, the mission basically of the foundation is to preserve and perpetuate my father's legacy for generations to come, but primarily through um, educational means. So, like the foundation has a scholarship program. Um, oh. We do okay. seminars in Jeet Kune Do. Um, I go around and speak at schools and, and um, martial arts schools and you know uh, other types of academic schools mm -hmm. and things like that. And then um, our big big project, which we've just launched, is to build the Bruce Lee Action Museum. Oh, I'm, I, I saw that. I, I, saw, I saw your artist renderings, and this is so yeah. exciting. Yes. Because you know what I've always thought ab about your father and, and what you're doing with him? It, it always seemed to me that there needed to be a, a mecca, mm. a place that uh, fans could come, they could share with other fans, that they could learn mm -hmm. from, from his archives. Mm -hmm. And there was never really a singular place. Right. for this, right? Now to do this, you're doing it in Seattle. Yes. And you have something online where people can buy bricks. 
it's Tell, not, is, it's, is that what I'm understanding? Yes, yeah. it's not up yet. We're we're building the website right now, okay. um, which is going to be at BruceLeeActionMuseum.org, I believe. Okay. And um, you will be able to buy essentially a virtual brick. So you know they have these things at museums where you can buy a, a brick or a tile or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. and have your name or your family's name or a friend's name or whatever etched yeah. in it. And when the building and that will exist online in a, in a virtual space okay. initially. Yeah. And then once the building is built, we'll actually lay those down. So they're going to be like a walkway? Um, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll need to decide whether it'll be a walkway or a wall yeah. or, or what it will be, but, but definitely there'll be. The, um, the museum sounds so exciting. You're going to have a uh, meditation area, yes. and, mm -hmm. uh, an education area, a cafe, a gift shop. Mm -hmm. You're going to have all of your father's writings and his archives and his books. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah. this, is, this, is, this is pretty amazing. Yeah, well, and the other thing too that I'm really excited about with this museum is that it's also not just going to be a Bruce Lee memorabilia museum. Mm -hmm. The idea is that it's the Bruce Lee Action Museum and it uses my father's legacy as the vehicle, if you will, for really looking at the idea of action and taking action and the different forms oh, that's, of action. Yeah, taking action, okay, I, yeah. I didn't see that. Okay, that makes sense though. Yeah, and the way he did it in his life. So, of course, mm -hmm. martial arts action and film yeah. action, but also social and cultural action and self-actualization, philosophical oh. action and all of these things. So I really hope that it's not just a place for the Bruce Lee fan, but really a, a place for anyone to come and really learn something. Discover the other things, the, yes. the essence of him behind beyond movies. That's that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And that's a great thing for his daughter to do. <laughs> you're, you're really you're really honoring him by what yeah. you're doing. I hope so. Yeah. But it, it, it seems to me that you're also honoring your brother as well in the process. Yeah. By carrying this, this torch. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Now you have this um, fantastic movie that's coming out. Yes. It's on February 9th to 15th in the theaters. It's called... I Am Bruce Lee. Yes. And, and I don't know if you thought about this or not, but for many, many people around the world, do you realize this will be their first time to see your father in a movie theater? Yeah, that, yeah. It was originally going to be on Spike TV, right? It's, oh, it's going it's to be on Spike It's going to, to be, yeah. yeah. It'll still air on Spike, but it's coming out in theaters first. And we're so excited because initially it started off as a television project. Mm -hmm. But the film is such a beautiful film that um, we're able to get a theatrical release. So I, I saw the people in it. You got Kobe Bryant in it. You got Mickey Rourke in it. Yeah. I just, it's just a, a amazing. <laughs> what, what, now, now, there's been other movies about your dad done. Mm -hmm. What makes this one different, do you think? Um, you know, this, it's a documentary, so there have been other documentaries that have been done, but this is a documentary on a whole new level. It's really like a film. I mean, it's got a beautiful look and feel to it. It's not just, you know, people... Shot really in, well. Shot really yeah. well. It's not just like in random hotel rooms, and it doesn't have voiceover kind of saying, and then Bruce moved to Hong Kong. And, you know, I mean, yeah. it's... Yeah, and another story, picture, another yeah. picture goes by. <laughs> right. It's black and white again. Why is that? Well, because of that, no color back then, you know? Yeah, what's beautiful about it is that the story is told and, and, and unwound throughout the film through the voices of the people being interviewed. And the nice thing is that you have the perspective of the people who knew him, like my mom and Dan and Asanto and sure. all these people. But you also have the perspective of people who have been affected and influenced by his legacy, which is also part of That's his so story. That's so important. You know, I, <laughs> right. don't know, I don't know if anybody's ever done that before when they talk yeah. about your dad, because, but that's really maybe the biggest, because you have the core group, Danny Asanto and your mom and everybody, but there's right. these people that really have had life-changing experiences because who your dad was. Right, and that is really telling the totality of the story. It's yes. not just his life, it's thing. everything that has happened. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's right, it's amazing. <laughs> um, so the movie's coming out to be on the 9th and the 15th in theaters, and it's yes. in a lot of cities. It's in a lot of cities. You can go to IamBruceLeeMovie.com mm -hmm. for a list of theaters and to watch the trailer, and if it's not showing in your um, city, you can request a screening. So. Okay, and um, I love what you're doing, by the way, with social media. You're <laughs> nailing it. Like this this is this is where we see you talking. <laughs> this is it. Right? This is the background um, right here. We can we can we can see Shannon's uh, your Bruce Lee uh, page. When I first saw the page I was like, oh no, that could not be the family. But then I saw you, your video logs, and I'm going like Yes, well done. <laughs> and you got like over a million fans on there. Yeah. You're doing the. How do you find us on, on, on YouTube as well? Yes, we have um, we have a, 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 a dedicated um, a page on YouTube for all of our vlogs and. Um, on our website is where at BruceLee.com is where you can also encounter the blog and a lot of legacy, the Facebook page and Twitter. 
Yes. So. Now, you're also doing something very interesting with merchandise, which I really, really like. Instead of just buying a Bruce Lee t-shirt, mm -hmm. they have numbers on them. Mm -hmm. And you can register your shirt, and they're, and they're all really cool things. Like you did this one, and I don't know when you did it, but I thought it was the greatest idea. If you were one of your dad's students, you got a, um, a booklet, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he put your name and everything and what rank you were. And uh, But the outside of it, you did a t-shirt that's very similar to that, right? Yes, uh-huh. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's really great because, you know, as a licensing company, of course, we have a lot of licensees that make product and we sell a number of their product. But we also wanted to create our own line that was really based and rooted in, you know, my father and his, and the heritage and the legacy and all of that. And so we wanted to come up with designs that really mm -hmm. came from something and had a story. Had emotion yes. behind it. Yes. Why did you decide to do the licensing yourself when a lot of big, uh, a lot of families like, you know, I don't know, John Wayne like that would let big corporations do it. Why did you decide to, to keep that and do it yourself? Um, you know, I think because um, nobody cares as much as we care. You're right. <laughs> yeah, you're, 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 okay, you don't need to say anything else. That's it. Think, uh, speaking about how, uh, I, I got to tell you what happened. So, um, I was in my Burbank Studios waiting to go to a screening over there because I do I do movie reviews as well. Mm -hmm. And I went to an old bookstore. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't. I think Charlotte might have told you about this. Um, I was just going through TV guides, uh -huh. and it's in my pocket here. Oh, I found this. Can, yeah. can, can, can you guys see that? I got it in plastic still. Uh, I want to give this to you. Um, oh my gosh. You know who that guy is, right? Of course. That's your dad as the Green Hornet. I don't even know what year it was, but that's a complete TV guide. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Thank and you I so much. And I saw it, and I just thought of some, because I knew Shannon or Charlotte worked with you, and I said, okay, someday I'm going to give this to you. I just saw it. I just thought it'd be oh my gosh. amazing. No, that's terrific. We'll definitely put this in the archives, and then I'm sure it'll end up in the museum. Perfect. Good. <laughs> so um, people are going to want to follow you on Facebook, first of all. Okay. Um, is it just Bruce Lee, or what? what is it? How do you yeah, find your Facebook? Yeah, uh, www.facebook.com. Facebook.com slash Bruce Lee. You guys, you guys have to follow Shannon there. And through there, we'll be able to follow the uh, the advancement of how you're coming along with the museum. Yes. Um, you got so many exciting things going on. It's the Year of the Dragon. It is the Year of the Dragon. <laughs> so so um, I appreciate you so much. Uh, you, you're, I know you're so busy because in a couple days, you're going to Vancouver for the screening of your movie. Yeah, I'm going tomorrow. And oh, the, it's tomorrow. Yeah, I'm leaving tomorrow. The Canadian premiere is Wednesday, so wow. I'm really looking forward Shannon, to it. Shannon, thank you so much. Thank it's you. It's such a pleasure talking to you. Very nice to talk to you, too. And scene. Oh, that's it. <laughs>